Well, welcome to episode 4 of the Lithuania Project. This is probably the first big, um, big episode, I guess. Uh, the first three is whatever, it's a season. But this one, we're going to try and go in depth about everything, but I'm going to try and make sure that we're not looking too into things and um, seeing things, you know, that are kind of weird and all that. Um, and I'm going to try and, and not ramble on too much. I'm just going to get straight into it and all of that fun stuff. So let's take a look at the leagues in focus. Zelgris have won it and Sujuva have been relegated. And I hinted at this in episode 3 about Sujuva and what happened to them. And yes, they have been relegated. And in fact, if we go into the profile... You will see that Zelgiris have dominated. You will also see that since the last episode when we were here, we've gone to 61st and to 59th and then now 57th. We are on par now with 3 Liga in Germany. And I think that is an absolute win. So, there we go. You'll the keen eye will also know that Romanovs, Ro Roman, uh, I, I always get him wrong. He's the same, you know, kind of player as far as ranking goes, but he yet again is top goal scorer in this sixth season. So if we take a look now at at the stages, and we just kind of scroll back a bit, you will see that not only did after so Juva get um, champions. They went then straight down, and Zelgiris dominated without Europe. And then since Europe, they've been kind of shaky on their form for the most part, but still looking pretty good. Now, Sajuva so have been woeful in transfers. And we'll see this as we go back. So um, I had been trying to work this out initially uh, from what had happened in that season. So this is the season we saw in season three where they got rid of this guy, got a bunch of money for it. And you think, well, they'll be able to reinvest that money. They didn't at all. They got a bunch of free transfers, a bunch of loans. And while some of these teams, like Hajuk, Red Star, they are, you know, decent teams, the amount of team cohesion that you see here is very poor. And you see as well with the sales is well the sales, yes, they are they are more, not by much. And here's where things get interesting, is the amount of, of players they lose in this transfer window, the 2023 season. So they spend quite a bit of money here just trying to rebuild the team from some, you know, lower sides, though getting a few players from Zalgiris, Hegelman, uh, Riteri, I, A, I don't know, a player from Banga, but... You know, for the second division, they absolutely stomped it. We will take a look at that. But they lost a lot of players. The two biggest being Ivan Mamut going to Zalgiris, despite him not doing too well. He's basically backup for them. Um, and uh, Nysir over here, the Colombian striker who's gone... Um, to court, uh, a, a, a Colombian club. We'll, we'll just say that. Because uh, I don't want to pronounce the name. Um, so it is actually very interesting to take a look at that. And then getting back in to the league, they actually made a slight profit losing a guy to a B team, which is a team as well in the division below. Um, Saduva's pull power absolutely has diminished. And all from one season 
in the below league in the league one however it's not all bad zalgiris are absolute kings they also have a prospect called pele who is a goalkeeper forgot about that one actually I've all, I found that really funny when I first recorded this anyway their transfer history has been steady in the sense that it has been bye 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 um these guys are like the man city in a way but or of 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 you know transfers and, and all that and you'll take a we'll take a look at some of their players that are going um, and we'll take a look at a few players as well that you'll see but uh, the teams you know obviously you get oh Lucas Ivanuskas who's now rated at 10.25 million he has one appearance one a goal and if you're looking at it, he already has at the age of 21 34 international appearances at with seven goals very solid numbers now he didn't even score a goal at Zelgiris. i don't know what they were doing but this guy should have been doing extremely well there he is basically rated he's rated highly right and he is really the first lithuanian output from uh the league and and you know to a top team so a class player there really and uh, the rest it's just whatever um and then going here the only one of note uh would be marius adamonis who's gone to pescara in probably serie b or something yeah so very interesting this guy's actually played at bournemouth interestingly i don't know what to say um but that's pretty interesting i thought um pele being the only real like hot prospect and he's not even hungarian is a little sad but you also have gabor sos who is a good player uh not world class but what's interesting about him and as we go to lithuania you will see that he I don't know, I thought he was on the top players, but actually there is a, a different player who is in the top players for Lithuania, and we will look at a few of these guys because it is very different, uh, everything. So, Dominikas... Jeff, we'll call him Jeff. Jeff over here, not a great player, not even the key player, but... Um, he is one of the top internationals, rated decently high, scored a few goals, good youth prospect coming from the Zelgiris youth setup. We looked at Ivanuskas, and now we have Titus over here, a Retarii player who has gone to Tenerife. I'm not exactly, yeah, on free deal. Most of these guys go on a free deal, which isn't great for the league, but it's whatever. You also have Misiunis, rated at 2 million, going on a free to Sporting CP. So we now have like three true talented players that are going to a bigger league. Um, I would say that all these players have done excellent. Um, Dubikas was already at in Italy. He's I guess just looked better in recent time. Um and this guy again, uh a Zalgiris player. Did he leave on a free? Potentially this is before the game, so I can't really say because he's he's gone to Cyprus. Um interestingly enough, but he's done well there. Uh the lowest I think the clubs gotten or the world the uh the the international team's gotten is 138 we're back up to 122nd now where things get really interesting on competition reputation so obviously 
you know, we're up to what, 57th or something like that over here. Yeah. So, you know, two star reputation, but the coefficients are interesting. So here we are. And you'll notice that there's one season that's going to really stick out to you people. And that is this 5.0 season. So what happened in the 23-24 season that changed everything? So let's take a look at Zalgiris because if we take a look at their schedule, qualifiers and all that, get into the, they didn't get into Euro 2, whatever. However, another season where they got into the group. So... If we go back a season, what's this? They finished top of the group. So you go to the first knockout round. Well, they're not going to be in it. Second knockout round of this season, they did get knocked. Or they, they beat, sorry, they beat Mold. Meaning they got into the quarter finals where they lost to Ren. Staren. So Zogiris making a bit of a name for themselves, being piped up against the teams like Ren, Aberdeen, Basel, Krasnodar, Schalk, CSK, Moscow. These are pretty decent names in football. These are teams that pretty much everyone knows about. And that was the year Ren won it losing to the eventual winners. I think the only team that they probably could have beaten was Aberdeen. Potentially. Maybe Moscow. But that is neither here nor there. This little Lithuanian side did wonders in the Euro 2 competition. And we applaud them for it. Getting to the quarterfinal and really making a massive, massive statement in um, and getting to not only that point, but for the coefficients and really bringing the team up, you know, the, whole, the whole league up. If we go to past winners, Young Boys won it, then Atalanta, then Ren. We go up a bit more, we see with the Europa League, FC Porto has won a Europa League, Man United and Sevilla. Coming up here, PSG, Bayern Munich, and PSG yet again. All right. Now, we'll go back to the leagues and focus. We'll take a look at this league table. I'm going to go to this season as we just kind of scroll down. Um, and we see, so Rotaria's B side did very well. Um, I don't know, I think, so, so I, I, I'm figuring Sujuva's B side get relegated here because their team gets relegated in real life, despite the fact that they nearly got promoted. Um, and uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Sujuva go up as champions, losing two games. Um, just storming the league, obvious winners, uh, very highly over, uh, Siulai, <laughs> I don't know, um, neither of these sides would have gone up, obviously, so, um, and then, again, the B teams are really dominating, these top B teams, they are, they're dominating, and again, Sujuva's B side going and getting relegated. Uh, if we go down a league and we go to, it's not too, I don't know how interesting this is to some people. Cause I, I, I mean, if it was like me and I was in Lithuania, I grew up in Lithuania, I'd find all this so fascinating as far as the lower leagues go. Um, cause you know, being a, uh, for me, if it's like me with England is I'm very interested in the lower leagues because I know the English leagues very well. Um, but as we go up, obviously, Stuva B side, too good for the division, but continuously getting relegated as Stuva 
just don't do very well. And then obviously two teams from Atalantis has really fallen off. They looking decent on a downward spiral and then they get their relegation, promotion, relegation, mid well, low mid table then relegation then promotion. So they're not looking too good there. Maybe we'll see a revival, who knows. Time will tell. Um as we go up though, we will take a bit uh in the transfers to see what happens. So if we sort it by fee, it's kind of obvious that Zelgiris would be getting the big the big bucks. But Jugus they're interesting now obviously that's not their actual team but go you know to here they are not in here um they're down here they're a mid-table team and i always see them and i okay, got mid-table to see they did get promoted um i do remember that but they're not you know some amazing team this is one of their top players or young young players are so it is very interesting to see all that mind my dog barking in the background hopefully he will stop soon um but as far as transfers go you know it's very interesting to always see them because i always see that name so they must have money and are financially back but if that was the case they'd probably be doing a bit better but you never know but there really aren't a lot of transfers that involve money uh as well um and similar teams kind of get their players poached to to larger teams uh obviously losing a player to pescara is a big one i was gonna see managerial movements um but merrick hamshik i cannot believe it So Marek Hamšík is a manager of Kwano Zalgiris. I don't know what to say. Um and and Gog X Zalgiris player, actually actual Zalgiris player and then Kwano Zalgiris. So and obviously the X Liverpool and Bolton PSG player. Um, so we've got some interesting jobs here. And then, uh, yeah, this is Igor Akinfev, who CSK Moscow legend, and he is the Hegelman Liauten manager. So we've got some pretty big names. I don't know if um, I see anyone else that is big uh, maybe some of these names are big in other areas so do let me know if that is the case but i think the probably the biggest player and i didn't realize marek hamshik being manager of kwano i mean I, i'm trying to picture hamshik on the sideline in a suit with his little um mohawk and, and beard and trying to be serious <laughs> but um wow i'm actually really surprised i never looked at the managers and i saw that and i was like oh, i should take a look at that um so very very interesting to look at all of that anyway after this it's all going to be new things that i haven't seen before so make sure you go ahead we're going to upload that up this episode it'll probably be out next day or two so stay tuned for that you'll actually get some genuine reactions from me taking a look at things and being interested um and if you enjoyed make sure you go ahead and hit that like button share and all that all the videos and stuff and i still need to know how to make this league not have eight teams because otherwise we could have some well i'll probably end it if lithuania um win the world cup or something like that speaking of which i haven't shown you the world cup and i feel really stupid now 
So, Portugal won the World Cup. Lithuania were not in it. That is it, really. Um, we'll take a look at who won the 2026 World Cup very soon. And that means we can actually look at the Euros. Uh, European Football Championship? I'm assuming that's it. So England won it. I think I showed that. And Holland won it in 2024. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching now. I can say that. And um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Do take care.